1986, Slayer released their album, Rain and Blood. And my friend Tommy and I are going to talk about it on this episode of Records with Ray. So Tommy, would it be safe to say that Slayer's Rain and Blood is the best thrash album of all time? It would be more than safe to say that. Yeah. To the point where, like, if I was to try to pick a number two, I don't even know what it would be. I don't even know if it would be another Slayer album. I'll never forget. 1986 is when Rain and Blood came out. Mm -hmm. And being a product of the 80s, it was all about cassette tapes. Hmm. I didn't really buy albums back then. Did you? Were you actually buying albums? Oh, yeah, I, I bought the album. I bought all those albums. Oh, really? I, I was, everything was on tape for me. And I remember Hello Waits was already out. But I didn't buy that. And I remember Rain and Blood came out. Hmm. And I remember it was on a tape, right? And what they did is they actually had the entire album on both sides of the tape. And it was funny because I'm like not really looking closely at things. I thought it was like all these songs. Oh my God, look at all these songs that's on side one. Mm-hmm. Look at all these songs that are on side two. <laughs> not realizing it's just the entire album. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, like double. It's efficiency. But I think that was, I, that was a tell. Because most, most metal bands and most metal albums are like, are like long. Even even Slayer when they were doing Hell Awaits, it's kind of long. Oh, like like the song Hell Awaits is like what seven minutes long or whatever. Mm-hmm. Kill Again is a long song. Yeah. At Dawn They Sleep. I mean Slayer was writing long songs. Metallica has always written long songs. You have Rain and Blood where like you look at the song lens, two minutes. I think Necrophobic is like a minute and a half. Yeah. I think the longest it's... song on the album is Angel of Death, right? Yeah, that and Raining Blood, I think. Yeah. Around four minutes. Yeah. That's but, it. But yeah, it's like a hardcore punk record, but it's metal. Dude, when you when you when you bought Rain and Blood, did you were you already into punk rock at the time, mm-hmm. or were you just a full on metalhead? Yeah, I was dabbling into punk too. But okay. Slayer was always the tops. When you when you bought that, did you know that there was definitely going to be that metal that that metal and punk influence? Not when I bought it. No, no. when I heard it. Yeah, that's where you yeah. Definitely, especially on Necrophobic, because mm. it's just pure speed. Yeah, that's my fat. That's my favorite song on Rain and Blood, and it's my favorite Slayer song ever. Yeah, I love it because like that song. That song is the epitome of Rain and Blood. Mm-hmm. It literally feels like a train is like on, like going down the line, and it's at any second it's gonna go off the rails. Especially when they do that. Especially in the guitar solo. When Dave Lombardo's just doing all those crazy ass fills and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Um, interesting thing about about Slayer, and this is the reason why I think, well, they're like they're my favorite band. Why the, the it's all about intensity. And um, a lot of like metal usually was like in like not to get technical, but like guitar tuning with like most songs would be like an E, you know. Mm-hmm. And what Slayer would do is they would write like Necrophobic is an A. So it's higher. So there's already this level of intensity mm-hmm. that most meta, other metal bands never even had. And they were, what I loved about the song Angel of Death, like when it goes into the solos, when they go back and forth, they're constantly changing the keys. It's like when, uh, then it goes higher and mm-hmm. it just creates this level of intensity that like yeah. no other metal band was, was able to duplicate. Or have. No. Or I see it. Tommy has something for us to see. Original tour shirt, Rain and Blood, eighty six. Now, when you when you bought that, was it was it this uh, light gray that it is now? It was a dark black, <laughs> <laughs> and it's also it was large on me then. Oh my god! Now it's a, like a teen shirt, but this was at the Stone in San Francisco where I bought it. I moved from Hawaii to California. Saw them two months into it on that tour. So when you went and saw them, did. Did you already own Rain and Blood? Yeah, I did. Okay, so you know what to expect. Yeah, but I wasn't all quite familiar with it. I was more into the old stuff at the time. So you were a Slayer. So when did you get into Slayer? Like right at the very beginning with Show No Mercy? Yeah, 83. I heard them in Hawaii, of all places. Was that? And so you have Show No Mercy, which is a pretty standard thrash album back then. I don't, and then, the, the, then did you get Haunting the Chapel, mm-hmm. Live Under? All in sequential order, yeah. Because I just... 
Had a love affair from the first album on. From the first one. And then when Rain and Blood came out, what did you think of that album compared to the other Slayer albums? Actually, I wasn't like, quite ready for how awesome it was, I guess. Yeah. I mean, it was just... It, and it's so fast, it's over in 28 minutes, I guess. Yeah. But, yeah, you're expecting longer songs, like, like you said, Hell Awaits and stuff like that. And that's nowhere near kind of what they were doing anymore in that sense. The thing that I love about Rain and Blood, and I think this is the reason why Slayer gets the accolades that they do, is because they literally rewrote what metal was when they made that album. Mm. And... I remember when, when I got Rain and Blood, it was like, I, I just assumed like, okay, well, this is how this is. Short songs, fast. Not really realizing how much of a departure that is from, from even from them, but like any other thrash band. Yeah. What would be your favorite song off of Rain and Blood? Oh, jeez. That's a tough one. I mean, I hate to say Angel of Death, but it's definitely one of my favorites. Yeah. Uh, Rain and Blood, too. Postmortem into Rain and Blood's always awesome. Yeah. <sighs> Necrophobic. I mean, it's hard to pick. I'd say all of them. I don't know. It's a perfect album as far as I think we see it. The reason why I feel it's a perfect album is like, well, I'm a speed freak. I like fast songs. And every song is fast. Yep. There are points in in um, Alter Sacrifice and obviously in Angel of Death where things go a little bit slower for a little bit, but then they keep then they go back and they become fast again. Yeah. yeah. But um, there is like no slow sleeper songs in my opinion. No. Mm-hmm. Um, and also the productions, Rick Rubin. It's incredible. Yeah, Rick Rubin. AKA. And and again, I remember like the whole big thing about Rain and Blood is that it's so dry. The recording is so dry. Mm-hmm. And when you go back and you listen to other metal albums, there's like all this reverb. Yeah. And like atmospheric. Yeah. This is just and um, no frills. I mean, and it's and it cuts through. Mm-hmm. Like the drums, the drums. To my opinion, the, the drums, Dave Lombardo's drumming, kind of makes the album. Oh, absolutely. This like frantic, this like frantic drumming. His like crazy ass fills. No, it's ferocious. It's the double bass, and you can hear all the double bass. You can hear all the drum shit he's doing. Like the other albums, it's kind of a muddier production, and he's doing double kick fast and like he usually does, but you don't hear it like he do from this album on. Yeah. And to them, they they said it was just another album. It wasn't. Really? Yeah. I Man, Carrie King just said, "Yeah, we just made it. We just made another album after Hell Awaits, and we didn't think it would become what it became. They're just songs we created, like they usually do, but became the masterpiece of the thrash metal." Yeah. So, unlike some of the people on Amazon, you showed me who, who give it one star out of five, which is oh, that's always fun, incredible. Yeah, you you read these people and they say like, "How <laughs> they think they." I can't believe how like a lot of people talk about like like the soloing because it's all this wee wee, <laughs> yeah. but it's all it's all about creating the effect though. Mm-hmm. It's 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 supposed to create the effect of like this is going off the rails at any moment. Yeah. And I think if you had solos that were like really intricate and really melodic, it wouldn't be the same. I just like fast thrash music and music that's intense. Mm-hmm. Um, and the thing is, a lot of newer met- a lot of the newer metal bands that are they're they're trying to get their intensity from like doing like a lot of crazy parts and a lot of time changes really really quickly. Yeah. But there's like no groove. No. And what I love about Rain and Blood is it just there's one groove and that's yeah 